This story was created by two friends of mine, Linda Bandelier and David Campbell. But when you hear it, you'll probably think it's a traditional story because it's got that sort of structure. Now, in the west of Scotland, it was a special day. It was the seventh day of the seventh month of the seventh year. And on this special day, three babies were born in the village. Not to the same family, but to three different families. Well, the old women of the village were so excited because whenever new babies came along, they went and visited. They had a little nosy to see the baby. And then they gave the baby a Hansel, which was some silver in their hand, and it wished them luck for the future. Well, they would have to go and see three babies today, so they were bristling with excitement. The first baby they decided to see was the baby of the Campbell family. Now, the Campbells lived right at the top of the glen on a croft. So away up the hill they went, and when they got to the Campbell's house, the door was wide open. So they shouted, Kiwi! And Mrs. Campbell said, Come away in, you'll be here to see my wee bairn, are you? Oh yes, they said. What is it, a boy or a girl? Oh, she said, it's a wee boy, a wee laddie. Here he is in his cot. They went across, and they looked into the cot, and there he was. Oh, he was bra. He had ginger spiky hair. Can you do that? And he had blue sparkly eyes. Oh my, he said, isn't he bonny? Now tell us, what are you going to call them? Oh well, she said, we've had to think long and hard about what we'd call them, but we've decided on Donald. Oh, that's lovely, they said. They took his wee hand, they gave him his Hansel, they wished him luck for the future, and Mrs Campbell said, now you'll stay and have a wee cup of tea, won't you? Oh, no, they said, we're far too busy today for that. We'll have to get on. So away they went. Down the hill they went to the next place where there was a baby, which was the McCallum's house. They stayed on a farm. And when they got to the McCallum's, they knocked on the door and Mr McCallum opened up the door and there he stood, proud as punch, with his baby in his arms. Here he is, he said, the new arrival. Oh my, they said, let's have a wee look at him. Well, he pulled back the shawl a wee bit and they had a good look and, oh my, do you know he had ginger spiky hair and blue sparkly eyes. Oh my, they said, well, he's a bonny lad. Tell us now, what are you going to call him? Oh, well, there's a tradition in our family, a long tradition. Firstborn son, he has to be called Donald. Oh, my, said the old woman. Well, they weren't very enthusiastic about that, but they didn't say anything about why. They just kind of nudged each other and, and looked embarrassed. Well, they gave wee Donald his Hansel. And then Mr. McCallum said, will you stay and have a wee dram of whiskey now? Oh, no, they said, we're far too busy for that. We've got to get away and see this other baby. So down the hill they went, right down to the shore of the loch. And there the McCrae's lived. Well, they went and knocked on the door and Mrs McCrae answered and she said, Oh, I've been expecting you. Come away in. Here's my wee baby over here. And there in a little crib was a baby. Let's have a look at him, said the old woman pulled back the shawl and oh, they gasped. He had ginger spiky hair and blue sparkly eyes. Oh my, my, oh he's awful bonny, they said. But they were so embarrassed. And then tentatively they said, and what will you be calling him? Well, said Mrs McCrae, we thought of James, we thought of George, but we've decided on Donald. Oh my, said the old woman. Well, they hardly said another word. They quickly gave him his Hansel and away out the door they fled. And as soon as they were out of earshot, they said, what are we going to do? Three Donalds, they all look the same. What's going to happen? When they go to school, the teachers will muddle them all up. 
the parents might even take the wrong child home. Oh, what are we going to do to be able to tell them apart? Well, one of the old women said, let's not say anything about it just now. The parents will all discover what's happened when they go to church on Sunday. Because whenever there's a new baby at church, then they're on show on the grass out the front. So Sunday came, and sure enough, all the babies were laid out on the grass at the front. And the parents were a bit surprised when they saw that they all had ginger spiky hair and blue sparkly eyes. Oh, well, what have you called yours, Mrs. Campbell? Well, mine's Donald, she said. <gasps> but mine's Donald, said Mrs. McRae. But so is mine, said Mrs. McCallum. Oh, what are we going to do? Well, someone had the bright idea of going to see the wise old woman. Because in every village in those days, there was a wise old woman. And this woman's name was Morag. Well, the parents went to see Morag. And she said, I know what you're going to tell me. I've already seen all about it in the flames of my fire. And I'll have a solution for you by sunrise tomorrow. So, they left Morag to it. And Morag sat in her wee house and she stared into the flames of her peat fire. And she tried to come up with a solution. And then she sat outside under the rowan tree. She looked up into the sky and she dreamed a little of a solution. And at last, she had an idea. She went inside and she got her little basket of wools down from the shelf. And she got down her loom. You know, a loom is for weaving. And she thought about where each of the children lived, where they came from. Hmm. She thought, well now, the McCallum boy, he lives at the top of the hill. And there they have such rich earth. It's almost the colour of clay. So she took brown for the clay earth. And then she thought, you know, from the top of the glen, you can see the sky almost to its end. So she took blue for the sky. And then she thought about the white clouds that drift across the sky. And so she took white for the clouds. She put the wool into her loom. And then, can you help me? She began to weave. She went over and under and over and under and over and under. She made a piece of cloth specially <clears throat> for Donald McCallum. Well, then she thought about the next child and he lived, remember, in the, in the farm midway down the hill. They thought, well, now on the farm, there's a lot of trees that protect the fields. So she took brown for the trunks of the trees. <clears throat> and then she thought about the blue stream that runs through the farm. She took blue for the water. And then she thought about the green of the grass in the fields. And she took some green wool. And she began to weave again. Can you help me? Over and under. Over and under. Over and under. She made a piece of cloth specially for Donald McCallum. <clears throat> then she thought about the third child, Donald McCree, and he lived on the shores of the loch. So, of course, she thought about the blue water in the loch. She thought about the pink wild flowers that grew around the side of the loch in the summer. And she thought about the waves that get blown across the loch on a windy day. They look like little wee white horses. So she took white wool for the waves and she began to weave over and under, over and under, over and under. She made a piece of cloth specially <clears throat> for Donald McCree. Well, the sun still wasn't up and the old woman put all the pieces of cloth in her basket and away she went. 
she climbed to the top of the hill and there she crept into the house of the Campbells and she put the special piece of cloth over the cradle of Donald Campbell. Then down the hill she went and sneaked into the house of the sleeping McCallums and there she draped the piece of cloth over his crib. And then away down to the shores of the loch she went into the McCree's house and there she left the piece of cloth for Donald McCree. Well, the next morning, all the parents got up and they saw the special pieces of cloth that Morag had made for their babies. And they thought, what a wise old woman Morag is. Now we can wrap each of the babies in their special cloth and everyone will know which Donald they are. And as the boys grew older, they made the pieces of cloth into trousers. And as they grew more then into shorts, and as they grew more than just into little ties. But they always knew which Donald was which. And other people in the family, in the village, began to say, you know, that's a really good idea, that piece of cloth that shows where you came from. I would like one of them for my family. And Morag would make them a piece of cloth to say something about where they'd come from and what was special about their family. And families all over Scotland began to hear of the cloth and they wanted it too. And they say that that is how Tartan was born. <laughs>